that if we don't speak up in the 21st century, there won't be a 22nd century. It won't happen. You can look at all the stuff before us and tell. You know, did y'all see Miss Obama rapping, go to college? How many niggas that went to college, and I love the way she did it. She won my heart doing that. Because what she did was make the White House real. She's a real black woman, a real sister. She got down with her black people, her culture, and she expressed it. Boy, white folks are spinning in their grave. George Washington just flipped over six times because he can't believe some nigga was rapping in the White House. Come on now. The kicker is, what she said is, got to go to college. Good message, bad message. Got to go to historically black college and university. That's the message. That's the real one, because I wrote a note to myself. Which one? Harvard? Yale? Which one should you go to to become more white, more acceptable? You know, in almost any way you go today, the, the buzzwords are cultural sensitivity, inclusion, diversity. All that means is you niggas need to learn to be more white. That's what we're talking about. Because white people ain't trying to be culturally diverse. There's enough white people in the city of Richmond to turn every black restaurant in here to a major chain, chain of restaurants and make the city even greater. The only problem is white folks basically don't eat with niggas. No matter how good your food is. Because you got chitlin breath. That's the problem. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Canada's accepting immigrants into their country. Ask yourself what they're implying by look at Canada. Bring the Syrians here, right? Ladies and gentlemen, America's going to bring those Syrians here. But to say that might bring Al-Qaeda and ISIS here, is as ludicrous as saying niggas are stupid. Because ISIS is a mere mentality of thinking. You know, ladies and gentlemen, let's just be frank about it. What is happening in the Middle East is about oil. Resources for Western Europe and America. The control of those resources. Same in North Africa, West Africa. We're not at the level that we can't understand that these countries need, these advanced countries need resources. Let's think about the issue right here in America. Negroes have resources that white folks make billions on. And they don't have to pay you for it. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going this Sunday into your little Negro church and say to that pimp, hey, pimp, you need to start talking about economic growth and how we're going to march across Richmond and demand the restoration of the Second Street Black Business District that is now being commandeered to be a white area for everybody to enjoy and you get to put your little uh, picnic parade on on 2nd Street every September or October. Ladies and gentlemen, this is happening all across the country. When I read this story about uh, Mosby Court and our illustrious police chief, he's doing the best he can, but just like you cannot win, as the general said, against ISIS with bombs and guns, you can't fight an ideology. You cannot police and bring peace and prosperity to black, uh, uh, black areas of, of, of where the ghetto is with cops. No matter how many cops, because in this article, the police chief says he's undermanned, underfunded. But that won't solve the issue of poverty and, and miseducation. What the biggest miseducation is not in this ghetto. 
It is in the most pristine schools around Richmond and in Richmond where white children go because they learn nothing about Negroes except for throw a basketball, you break up a rape. You follow what I'm saying? That's basically what they learn. They can rap. They, they learn that, but they don't learn about your culture. There's no culture diversity. There's no adherence to your culture. What's really happening in your culture? White kids never are taken on bus rides to see where the black kids actually live in those ghettos. And that's your fault because you should be marching. When I see black people with candles and every time you turn around, like this article says, they got a t-shirt on with some black boy's name on it. You know what I'm saying? That's been killed. Ladies and gentlemen, that tells you how far down the jihad has reached of American white folks allowing us to our heads to be severed from our body politic to where we do not have an economy. We do not have a political system. We have no way to do business with the world. If white folks don't provide us with a source of money, we have nothing. And I think the black preacher is bought and paid for it. Let me just say that. Now they say, well, Mike, you can't say all black preachers. Ladies and gentlemen, make a liar out of me. You be the first black preacher to get up and really do something. I'm standing right here. I know you're sitting out there watching me. The phone is 915-5202. I'm waiting on him to call in here and let's talk. Because ladies and gentlemen, until we start crossing that line and we start saying to America, we want to be part of the country as a people, not as individuals who get lucky and get a job. That's not the goal. The goal is to be independent, taking care of ourselves. You cannot. You can look across this country. Chicago was industrial. And so was Detroit. So was Cleveland. So was Richmond with the tobacco industry. You can see how white industry left us decimated. And the only thing that filled it was a a government and a police force that's so sorry they can't stop the drugs from coming into a black neighborhood or all over here the drug flow but they can block the borders to stop the Syrian Muslims from coming to the country help me to understand what we're dealing with the disingenuous approach that white folks are using and I, I tell you what I'm fed up I am totally fed up I think this country is the wealthiest country in the nation, and it ought to spend all of that money it can on making sure that we receive real justice, which is our freedom and independence. The slaves were never free to be their own people. They were only emancipated. That is not freedom. Freedom is what white folks have in this country, are free to have their own economy, free to have their own military, free to have a police force that respects them, free to have an educational system that's of the highest quality for them, free to have anything they want. We are going to get the same thing. I might not live long enough to see it, but I want to be on record that the youth have spoken to you nigger preachers. They have spoken to you nigger educators that sit in these white run colleges and do nothing to you nigger educators that sit in your black colleges even though you're going broke and won't stand up for nothing. Black kids dying their blood running down the streets. You say nothing. You just sit there and let it happen. Black women go to college, get degrees, and still on the bottom of the totem pole of getting paid and promoted. White women are in running for president. Come on. Help me to understand. I say to a lot of black women out there, let me tell you all something. You are not in a struggle for equality with black men because we have nothing. We can't even afford to have a family anymore. Most black men make so little money that they can't take care of the children that they have. 
Now, I'm not condemning, I'm not condoning running away from the challenge. But I want you to understand the death grip of the white country that you live in has on you economically. And it's about time, and this is the most qualified time to make the argument before the world. Don't preach to us about ISIS and Al-Qaeda and how cool they are. When you have stripped us of our language, our minds, our economy, we have nothing. We come to you for jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, where are all the black men at? You know, I've only heard one person, and I'll be honest with you, I believe there are more, but only one major leader, that's Farrakhan, that has made any strong statements. And I'm not a Muslim. I'm not defending Islam or anything like that. I'm just going above that and saying, wait a minute. We have difference of opinion, but at this point in the history of America, when the Supreme Court can tell you that y'all are a bunch of dumb niggas that need to go to your low-class schools, it's about time we start rallying the troops and saying, you know what? We're not dumb enough to stay here another century in this condition. It's about time we challenge before the world courts where they like to try all of the terrorists. We need to, tr we need to take this argument, our freedom as a people in this country. I'm not talking about back to Africa. I heard that before. I'm talking about now. 13% of that, whatever our population is, should, we should have that power in Congress, in the Senate and in the um, House of Representatives. We should also have an elected president. Who, t who deals with the white president of the United States. We are part of this country, and it's about time white folks start recognizing that. We're not going to be second-class citizens to y'all no more. We are not going to work in your factories and die broke. The wealth gap between blacks and whites is 20 to 1. 20 to 1. And we've been here 400 years. If that is not a, I'm about to cuss. Caller, you on the air? I'm about to cuss. Hello. Hello. Speak up. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. All right, I'm gonna let you go back to sleep. Call me back, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you something. I love it when y'all call in. Y'all tell your grandmas, everybody, that Mike Lee is on the air and he's getting busy because he's talking to you. Now, I know there's a lot of people, what you gonna do, Mike Lee? You don't do nothing but sit up there and talk all day. Somebody needs to talk to you dumb niggas. The Supreme Court then called you dumb niggas, I'm with it. You know, who's stupid enough to let all their colleges go out of business for the sake of saying you play for a white institution? Who would not at this point, based on what you want to march on something, then march on Scalia's, uh, 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 what his opinion about how circula circulating the court to try to get a majority rule to disenfranchise affirmative action, which I believe it. If we take down affirmative action, I said that 10 years ago, we will see the true core values of, uh, of white America. And I can tell you what that is. That's going to be that white guy that had the flag with the noose tied up and said he was just trying to learn how to tie knots around niggas. No, he didn't say niggas, but he, his excuse was he was tying knots for his flag of heritage and all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, this white man is so stupid that he says it's a rebel flag or a confederate flag and it's a, a my heritage. I agree with the, this cracker. I agree with him. Because if you read the Constitution, and you niggas don't, the reality is the rebel flag means rebellion. And anywhere you look in the annals of history, you will see that it was an insurrection. That's his heritage. And that's why it shouldn't be on the state capitals. With these half-baked, filled up with affirmative action preachers would just argue the real things and we're all the black scholars of the constitution that can't i'm just mike lee a commoner and i know more about the constitution they'll ever know because the constitution is the the, the 14th amendment is clear the insurrection 
you shall not be paid for. Every document you look at in history will tell you that that period was called an insurrection. 